Hi. So, let me tell you a little story. Not that long ago, in a country far, far away, Australia, a man by the name of Brooks, not Mel Brooks, because that's England, that's not far away, this is Holland, but Chad, did a video about two hand weapons in combination with shields. You know, as you can see, I've got a bunch of shields. And uh, the beating of a shield boss, this one in particular, was drowning out whether or not he was talking about bows. And I was rather lost in thought. Yes, sawdust and thinking doesn't go together, but it happened apparently. So I was thinking, well, let's do a video about that. So obviously we've got a bow, and we've got an unfinished fighting shield, which I was making at the time of watching Shad's video. A small round shield or a large buckler. A heater shield, the arm strap variety. We've got a pavise, the standing variety. Pavise crossbow one. This one has large straps on the back so you can wear it as a rucksack. And a stick so you can stand it up and sit behind it. Might look like a piece of bark, but it's not a piece of bark. This is a Norman kite shield according to the strappings. This is also the only one with a shoulder strap I've got. So, <coughs> bow. 100 pound U self bow. Just regular bow regular arrows. This is not about the arrow, this is not about the bow, this is a combination with the shields. Yep, I can still shoot that. The shields are typically held in the left hand. As you saw, I'm a left-handed shooter. That has to do with my dominant eye, which is the left one. Your left eye is dominant to the bow in your right hand. Most people have a right dominant eye and hold the bow in their left hand the other way. This can have a huge impact on how you use the shield. Now, you could put a bow in your right, a buckler or a small shield in your left. You could reasonably imagine you could use the bow. So let's just try, if we can, fire this bow. And I, I can instantly notice that this handle is way too thick for me to hand, hold on to this. Yep, this is way too thick a handle, that is my fault. So let's use a string to suspend it on my hand to simulate it. All that does fire, it pushes it off the bow because the edge of the shield is leaning against the arrow. Let's try that again, shooting over the thumb. I'll have to relearn to aim, but it works. Shield one, idiots zero. In this case, I'm the idiot, so don't feel offended. That was center grip. Also got strap shields. Yep, the corner of the shield is definitely interfering with the bow. Now you may have heard of a country called Mongolia. They also use shields, small and round ones, and they would be strapped around the wrist and the elbow, freeing the tip of the hand, as Shad said in the previous video, I believe, as well. No interference whatsoever on that. The Norman shields. Now, this might look a bit, this just is a fantasy thing, but sorry. Large pad, crosswise and vertical holding. Nice long shoulder strap. So you can strap it on your back. Run around. I've got both entire arms for you. No hindrance of this whatsoever. The strap is there, of course, so they can't rip this thing away. And this thing is reasonably flat. So let's just pick up an arrow. annoying but that's me. Are you thinking what about standing shields? Same with the massive ones. If I just set that down, I can quite comfortably stand behind this, easily step out, fire bar around it. So
like the kite shield has a strap system this strap system if you're interested is modeled after the movies they on display in the Dutch National Military Museum in Susterberg. It's two very long straps I can... Uh, if I kneel, the shield is standing and the weight is off my shoulders. This is really nice because if they're shooting at me, I don't want to be shooting under the shield into my foot. And it gives me respite from the uh, lather arch and the heavy shield. But this is also sticking out high enough so my helmet will stick out, yes, but hey, that's why I have a helmet. No hindrance whatsoever. So, put that right back. Now, as I was saying, being left handed or right handed or eyed, preferably the side of your dominant eye is important in archery. Now, obviously, anything you strap on your back is not going to be terribly inconvenient for the operating of a bow. If you're holding any kind of curved shield in the same hand as a bow, the shield edges are hitting the bow and the handle is not. So if I draw this back, it's going to slap against the edge of the shield, damaging my bow. This isn't a really good idea. Same with the heater shield. You hold the strap and the bow in the same hand. You place your arrow on top of the of the bow. There's going to be a shield in the way if you're putting it on your thumb, there's going to be a shield in the way and you could put it on the edge of the shield. It might work, but... And as Shad pointed out, if you leave your hand sticking out from the edge of the shield, you could theoretically put the arrow in between the shield and the bow. It might work, it's really inconvenient. Now, as I was drowning out Shad, hammering a shield boss, I was remembering a certain 16th century English flagship the name of Mary Rose. So after I finished this, I uh, went online, found a website of the Mary Rose Museum, and, well, because I remembered something called gun shields. I'll put an image up, maybe magic. One, yes, sir. Editor, thank you. Uh, gun shield, basically a round shield, hole in the middle, gun in it, breech loading guns, by this time, luckily, because muzzle loading guns are impro highly impractical in this. And um, later on, I was remembering certain images by a 15th century Italian weirdo, Leonardo da Vinci. You might have noted, heard of him. This image, yes, he drew something like that. You know, this particular image looks like a crossbow instead of a gun, which is perfectly plausible. Also has a stand to lean the shield on. He also has this image. Shield with bow on the outside of the shield. Now this may, proves a major problem. So if you put the she bow on the outside of the shield, then you'll definitely damage the bow if you use it as a shield. There's also this image of the shield being the bow. This is plywood technology that only capable of after the invention of fiberglass. And this image a bloke using a bow on the inside of a shield. The Viking shield I was making, watching his vid Shad's video. I had yet to put the shield boss on it. Putting the shield boss on this leaves a nice large hole. What a hole's good for putting arrows through. So what we're going to be testing. Taking the bow and the shield in front of it. Now I can use this reasonably well to fend off a few blows. I'm really concerned about the tips, but I could use a shorter bow. They had those. Now the thought was I could just literally do it like the image. I can spike the shield. Oh, sorry. I can now hold the shield, hold the bow, I cannot see a thing. Okay, that's going to be an issue. Okay. So, in the original image there is an extra slot. The handle of, of both tools are exactly the same item. There's basically a bracket holding the shield onto the bow. 
much as deflex is going to make this difficult. Let's try shooting over the thumb because on that side there's more space. This can be done. You cannot see me, I cannot see you because that's the major difficulty of shield in front of you. This is really heavy. Ow! This is way heavier than uh, your typical counterweights on a modern sports bow would be. But I can see this working. So, sorry Shad for ruining your idea with my ugly face. Thank you for supplying the idea. Okay, putting the content out, we appreciate it. Now I do have to mention some other humans. I've mentioned the Mongols. We've talked about Europeans. Let's mention some humans they're known as Japanese. Uh, thank you Metatron for screenshots. Uh, I was screenshotting some images, I'll put one up hopefully now. Editor, thank you. Yes. Around the 6th century, 5th, 6th century, horses were introduced to Japan. And after that the handheld shield pretty much faded out. Nice Japanese armors with those large flat pauldrons. And you can see the man on the horse wielding a bow. He's got huge squares on the, shield, on the shoulders. Those are shields. Turn it aside, your elbow, and use it. That is what in a modern European or medieval European, I should say, European styles, without shields on your shoulders or a cloak, you can simply draw straight and back. Now, if you ever watched any Japanese traditional archery, you will, will have noticed they draw the bow slightly different, a more meditating way in a modern sense, but there's actually a really practical reason for this because if you've got huge squares on your shoulders and you simply draw your bow out like that they're going to turn on the inside in front of your shoulder and if they're in front of your shoulder they're going to interfere with your bow especially your bowstring you're going to get caught break be really unpleasant So, the Japanese style, putting your hands forward, raising your hands completely above your head, and lowering the bow into a prone position before firing, is merely there to push aside the shields on your shoulders. Of course you've got them both sides, because on a horse you've got enemies on both sides, and your symmetry is also a thing that's considered beauty. So. So I hope that wasn't formative. Uh, sorry for having wasted your time. Congratulations on sticking it through the video. And I'll hope to see you again some other time, or you seeing me. Well thanks and goodbye.